Well, good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Brother Leslie Wilds, Pastor, King James Bible Baptist Church, 1402 East Fulton Street, Garden City, Kansas. And yes, good morning. It is 11 minutes after 8 o'clock on the 6th of December, the year of our Lord 2020. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Tomorrow is December 7, Pearl Harbor Day, for some of you remember. Pearl Harbor Day, December 7, 1941. Now, next year will mark the 80th anniversary. And that pretty much put us into World War II. My father, my, my father, my daddy, Keldon Wilds, he uh, was a Marine World War II, and he was at... Pearl Harbor, when they bombed it, he was in Iwo Jima, was in a bunch of major critical battles. You know, by the grace of God, he survived it all, but he was there. So, you know, tomorrow they're going to they're gonna have some festivities, or I guess ceremonies, rather, about that. Um, you know, um, we're watching history unfold, okay? Now, the, I'm going to title this message. It's called Where the Rubber Meets the Road. And believe me, um, the rubber's going to meet the road, and we're going to leave our mark. Come on. We, we, we're going to do a burnout. <laughs> what are you talking about, preacher? We got, I got to talk to y'all about something. Seriously, Christians, you need to pay attention. If any time you ever needed to listen, and pay attention. I mean, it's coming straight from God's Word. You know, I've talked about it before. Um, I'm just going to have to, we're going to have to um, come to an understanding that what's going on right now is it's perilous times that we live in. And we're looking at um, all sorts of, all sorts of uncertainties. And Christians in particular or beside themselves, they don't know what to do. Well, they don't read their Bibles, number one. You know, I preached on Psalm 37. Let me tell you something. If you're down and out and you're feeling bad and you're wondering, that, you know, why do the evil folk always come out on top and I'm just trying my best and doing my best and for some odd reason I keep getting the, you know, the proverbial shaft, you know. Well, you know, Psalm 37 you know, you feel in that way, you know, study, read that. It'll pick you up. I've already did a sermon on that one, but what I'm talk, going to talk about today, okay, and again, we're going to be in 2 Timothy chapters 3 and 4. And um, talking about the times that we live in now, um, before I start this message, I want to, you know, lift up a few folks in prayer. Uh, Brother Brian Kelly, King James Bible Baptist Church, um, New York City, New York, largest outdoor ministry, going strong, pray for him, and the platoon, <laughs> pray for Brother Dan Price and his ministry, and pray for all the brothers. Now, I'm still in Facebook jail for another two more days, so I'm going to ask any brother that I, you know, send this to to share it. And when I get back on um, Facebook, I'm just going to do a huge campaign to get folks to you know, watch my YouTube instead. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, censorship going on, especially to the Christians. You know, um, somebody posted the Lord's Prayer. They deleted it. 
put him in Facebook jail for it. My goodness, I preached on those stuff a lot worse than that. I preached pretty hard. By the grace of God, it was able to go out, and I just pray that um, this message will bless you. You know, it's true. The rubber meets the road, and we need we need to be about his work. So before we um, start this Bible study, let's go, Lord, in prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your blessings, Lord. Uh, Father, thank you for this time of fellowship, online fellowship, albeit this message is recorded and not live. Father, I pray that whoever watches this message be blessed by it. Lord, I pray the word go out and not come back void, Lord. Father, open our minds and our hearts to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Okay. Yeah, we're going to talk about chapter 3 and chapter 4 of 2 Timothy. So um, get your King James Bibles out. If you got a King James, uh, that's what I preach and teach out of. If you don't have a King James, <laughs> I highly recommend that you get one. If you're in the Garden City area, come here. I'll give you a free one. I don't have very many, but I'll give you one if you're local. Come on by. Got one with your name on it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And if you don't have one and got something else, follow along best you can. All right. Now, um, you know, we're talking about things that are going on in this world now. And this is in the year approximately A.D. 68. And... Um, Serious business. Serious things. And um, Paul, right, the Timothy there. This know also, Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Hear ye the word of the Lord. King James Bible. Okay. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, and continent fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. All right, we'll stop right there. We're looking at the state of affairs, the state of the union, the state of the world. In the last days, perilous times shall come. Well, what do we have in this society? With the internet and everything else, I mean, you know, we have, we're this selfie generation. Woo, do, 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 do. The selfie. Now, I take a picture or two and I have to use a selfie camera so I can get this sermon out. And believe me, I'm nothing pretty. I'm not much to look at, you know what I mean? But we live in a selfie generation. We're so absorbed with how we look. And what we do, we're self-absorbed. Yes, indeed. Shall, if, verse number two, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous. Yeah, I agree. I want that. I got to have that. Boasters, proud, blasphemers. Boy, you got them everywhere. Blasphemers. They don't care about the Lord. Most ungodly generation I've ever seen. Disobedient to parents. Boy, I know that. These kids don't know how to apologize. They don't know. Unthankful. Unholy. Verse number three. Without natural affection. I'll tell you something. Sodomy. Sodomites. Homosexuality. Lesbianism. It's rampant. All the diseases from the HIV and all is because of this type of lifestyle, this type of immoral lifestyle. The Bible calls it an abomination. People that practice those kind of lifestyles, they have a very short lifespan. 
unless they repent of their sin and turn to the Lord for salvation, they're going to have an eternity in a burning hell. Not my words, but the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke about hell more than anyone. See, friends, this is where the rubber meets the road. And believe me, it's time to hit the road and get on that road. If you're a lost person, you need, to get, you need to get on that road to the cross. You better get to the cross and get saved. Let's go on. Verse number three, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers. Here's one, despisers of those that are good. The people out there, look at the violence, look at all the hatred. Someone tries to do good, tries to help somebody. There's always somebody there to attack them. Pretty sad. Oh, preacher, you just you just you just trying to make us feel bad, shame us, and all. But I don't have to shame you. You do a good enough job shaming yourselves. Amen. Amen. Despisers of those that are good. Believe me, there are a lot of people out there who hate people who love God. People who hate the Lord Jesus Christ. What did the Lord Jesus Christ do? Healed the sick, raised the dead. The only people he ever really attacked were the religious hierarchy. And those money-changing devils in there, in, inside the temple. Yeah, he whooped them. But he preached love and to love your neighbor. But yet, you know, the modern liberal, these godless devils. Yeah, well, that's what they're talking about here. Despisers of those that are good. Verse 4, traitors. Yeah, they sell out their country for money. These politicians playing around with the communist Chinese. And betraying the people and the trust of the people. Oh, payday's coming, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Politician. Your day's coming. Don't ever think for a minute you're going to escape judgment. Here's where the rubber meets the road, buddy. Yeah, politician, you better repent. Payday's coming. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. What's that a picture of? That's a picture of the Pope in Rome. Denied the Lord and said that Jesus was a failure on the cross. And he denied the existence of hell when Jesus Christ preached on it exclusively and said that it exists. But yet he walks around with his cane and his Babylonian fish priest hat, acting all pious. The Bible said, verse number five, having a form of godliness, a form of, but denying the power thereof from such turn of Well, he denies the power. When do you ever hear the Pope stand up and say, Jesus, and quote Jesus' word that you must be born again, that he is the Jesus and I am the way. You won't ever hear him. Quote, John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You won't, you won't quote that. Well, if that's the case, why are we worshiping Mary and St. Joe or this guy and this guy? And this one guy, he's worshiping St. Death, the grim, grim Reaper. Yeah. <laughs> There's some Catholics that worship the Grim Reaper. Sure enough. It's some sort of a by proxy way to get to God. But here we go, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. What's the power of God? That's Lord Jesus Christ, the bloodshed, the gospel. Well, the cross is foolishness, yeah, to those who are perishing, those that believe it's the power of God. Right? Right. All right. 
having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. And it goes on to say, verse number six, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and leave captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, Satan has laid all sorts of minefields down. Look at what's going on now. Look at modern society. If you're an American living in this modern world, <clears throat> now more than ever, it's harder to live a Christian life. You think 2,000 years ago was tough for the new believers? Yeah, it was no picnic. But they didn't have near the distractions, the television, the internet, the propaganda, the secular garbage that comes across the airwaves that we've been listening to and they've been bombarding us since day one. Oops. <laughs> bombarding us since day one. It's harder now than it's ever been, friends. I'll tell you something. It's where the rubber meets the road. You know, we as Christians need to pick up the standard. We need to get up. If you don't do anything at all but go to church for 30 minutes and sit, if you really are born again, you should have some fruit. You've been saved five years, ten years, and you're doing nothing for the Lord? Here's where the rubber meets the road, man. You better wake up. You better realize that the Lord is coming. He did all this for you. And if you're saved, need to be doing something for him. Don't you think? Don't you think? Lord have mercy. If you don't, let me tell you something. Now is not the time. Now is not the time to be complacent, to sit around. Oh, brother so-and-so will do it. Brother so-and-so let me tell you something. You need to get back into your Bible. Get into this Bible. You're not getting into it. I'm not getting into it like I should. I'm going to confess. I haven't done it like I should. I haven't read like I should. I haven't studied like I should. Yeah. A lot more is expected out of me. I expect a lot more out of me. If I can get Christians just to open up their Bibles for 10 minutes, 10 minutes, turn that Babylonian idiot box off that television, 10 minutes to study this King James Bible. What a difference it'll make in your life. You'd be surprised. You know, hard times are coming, you know. I've been asked, well, preacher, are you pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-tribulation rapture? Well, I'm pre-trib. However, I do believe that until that up till the time the rapture comes, we will experience some persecution. In some countries, they're experiencing a lot more persecution. But, you know, <clears throat> Paul's talking about this, and he's going on in chapter 3. And, you know, he, he went through a lot. And, you know, he suffered a lot of persecution. He talked about even in the last days in verse number 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Right now, Satan is everywhere doing his best to keep people from the cross. From the cults out here on the street, Jehovah's false witnesses, the Mormons, these apostolic 
oneness Pentecostal heretics. That's what they are, heretics. Okay. Out here spreading a false message. And in the same time, people are dying and going to hell. That's right. Because they're not getting to the cross to get saved. The gospel is so simple. In a nutshell, Jesus died, according to Scripture, rose again, according to Scripture. He died on that cross. He paid it, our penalties. That our salvation is based solely on what he did and what he did alone on that cross. You want to go to heaven, you have to understand that you can do nothing, that he did it all. Let's go to chapter 4, 2 Timothy 4. And I'm going to read straight out of the book. This is Paul talking. And he says, verse number 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Verse number two. Here's where the rubber meets the road, Christian. This is for you. This is for you. Number two. Preach the word. Be instant. In season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Stop right here. What does that mean? What it means as a Christian, your job is to not only share the faith and study the word of God to grow in the word, but it's your job also, it says, to be instant, to reprove. That means if anybody ever asked you, you got to be ready to give a testimony. That ouch. Fingers hurt. <laughs> Smash my finger. But anyway, that quick. Okay. You got to be ready. And it says, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove. <coughs> rebuke. Sometimes you have to rebuke people. Why? They're preaching something false. You got to straighten them out. It's your job as a Christian. You know, somebody's out there preaching the heresy, you have to confront that person. Because the lost people don't know. If it's not biblical, they don't know. They're the unsuspecting ones. What well, the Bible talks about Satan is like a lion. Going to and fro, seeking whom he can devour. Sure enough. Go back, verse number two. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Verse number three, here we go. And if this isn't as true as it ever was, listen to this. <laughs> listen to this. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fable, unto fables. Verse 5, but watch thou in all things endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. But let's go back. For Verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And what's going on? You've got these preachers, even on Christian TV, preaching something other than Christ crucified. Preaching everything else. Oh, you'll have money. You'll have this if you just do this and have faith and have faith. And send me 50 bucks. I'll send you a, a prayer cloth, point of contact, or oh, touch your screen right now for a blessing. Yeah. Nonsense is what it is. Yet people fall for it. They really do. You know... <laughs> The Bible says the just shall live by faith. By faith. I don't need to touch no screen. Oh, I'll get a blessing. <laughs> it's kind of idolatrous, don't you think? Oh, I tell you now, if you... 
If you sow a seed right now, God will make you rich. Ridiculous. But they're everywhere out there. There are lying dogs out there who won't tell you that hell is real. And if you reject the gospel, that is where you go. They're not going to tell you that. But they want to get into your pocket. Okay? They want to get into your pocket. They care about your money. They don't care about your soul. I care about your soul. I preach on hell. I preach Christ crucified. I don't get a lot of money. People don't like that message. People don't want to hear that they're sinners that they need to get saved or they're going to burn. They don't want to hear that. They want it. They have itching ears. They want to hear how, oh, they can make their own reality and oh, hell's not real. It's just a slap on the wrist and a timeout. They want to listen to that to justify their sinful behavior. Oh, it's okay. It's not okay. <laughs> Believe me. Not okay for me. It's not okay for you. Not okay for anybody. Here's where the rubber meets the road, baby. That's right. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Itching ears. You know, not too long ago, a guy came in and visited, oh, I think not quite a year ago, probably maybe a year ago. Came into the church, we sat down, we had a service, and he was telling me he was looking for like-minded people. And I go, what are you talking about? And he was telling me this about, oh, we, you know, God revealed to him where he can, you can lose your salvation and God revealed this and this and the dream and all this business. I showed him where it says, if, you know, any man preach another gospel, you know, may be accursed. I'm, you know, I showed him that. I go that, you know, what you're getting, it's not from God. Okay. And, you know, I'm here preach the truth from the King James Bible, straight up, rightly divided. If you come, have your ears tickled or <laughs> scratched or whatever, you come to the wrong place. Okay? I preach straight out of this word, straight to you. And the Holy Ghost does the convicting. If you feel bad while I'm preaching, well, it's not me, it's the Holy Ghost. Maybe you need to repent. Maybe you need to turn from your sins. Oh, there's that word sin, 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 sin. For the wages of sin is death, 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 death. We can't talk about that preacher, but we need to. Here's where the rubber meets the road. Jesus said, unless ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. You lost people running from Jesus, you better get saved. Yeah, you think it's funny now. <laughs> it won't be funny when, when the wrath of God comes comes knocking at your door. It's coming very soon. <laughs> very soon. I just pray that the Lord comes. Raptures, raptures us out. Raptures me out of here. I'm ready. Well, preacher, um, why are you going? <laughs> because I went to the cross. I knew that I was on my way to hell, and I realized only one person qualified. Only one person qualified to pay for my sins and get me into heaven was the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said God became a man. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. It goes on to say that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. You know, um, friends, let me tell you, you can do a lot of things. We do, we all have decisions we have to make, okay? We all have decisions. The greatest decision you'll make in your life is choosing where you're going to spend eternity, heaven or hell. You want to go to heaven, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you want to go to hell, 
Just believe anything else. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm serious. If you were to die right now, if you were to die right now, do you know where you'd go? If God were to call you home, would you be standing in front of the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ? Or would you be in hell fire awaiting the white throne judgment? Friend, let me tell you, you need to repent. You need to turn to the Lord and ask him to save you right where you're at. I don't care what you've done. I don't care about any of that bit. What I care about is to see you going to heaven. And you're going to have to turn. Now, I ain't say quit sinning. You're going to have to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, the only one that can wash away your sins. And that's that blood that he shed. That's precious blood. The sinless sacrifice. That's precious blood. But it's that blood that washes away your sins and mine, friend. What must I do to be saved, preacher? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Amen. Friends, um... It really is where the rubber meets the road. Some of us have been, so to speak, we've been up on jack stands, sitting there, not gone anywhere. We've been sitting there spinning our wheels, up on jack stands. It's time we took, took them off the jack stands and got the tires, let the rubber meet the road time we did that and advance the gospel and do what we need to do for the kingdom Christian brother and sister what are you going to do for the kingdom what are you going to do it's time to get out and do the work of the Lord Friends, I love you and the Lord. This is Brother Leslie Wiles, King James Bible, Baptist Church, 1402 East Fulton Street, Garden City, Kansas. If you um, are close to Garden City, Finney County, Southwest Kansas, come by and visit us. If you'd like a, if you have any prayer requests, or like to speak with me sometime, 620-287-6390. Six three nine zero. I'd love to speak with you, pray with you, encourage you in the Lord. Okay, friends, time is very short. Okay, if you're a Christian, you need to be about God's work. If you're not a Christian, you need to get saved. Time is short, friend. This is Brother Leslie Wilds. Until next time, may the Lord richly bless you all, beloved. Peace.